నమో నమ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఐ ఆమ్ ఆర్ఆర్కే వెల్కమ్ ఓ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై ఛానల్ వెర్ ఐ టాక్ అబౌట్ ఆల్ థింగ్స్ బుకేష్ So today I'll be wrapping up all the novels that I read in the month of August. So I'll be covering the books one by one genre wise and I read a sum total of 15 books in the month of August. Let's start with the only fantasy novel that I read in August and that was also an arc that is an advanced readers copy. So the novel is The Hand of Sun King by TJ Great House. This was a story about a boy who is born with mixed blood. His struggle and fight to find his true place in the society forms the crux of the story. Honestly, this book was a disappointment and I pushed through only because it was an arc. If I had to describe this book in one word, it would be blunt. The story, the characters, I couldn't care for any of it. The plot was moving but it was an interesting a simple day long train journey in the indian peninsula will be more colorful interesting and lively than the entirety of this book i finished this book on august 26th and i already cannot tell you the names or plot lines of this book i'm not sure what i expected when i went into this book but bare minimum i expected to be entertained by it sadly this was forgettable for me so i gave this book two stars then as part of my ongoing one indian non fiction book per month goal i read the educational heritage of ancient india by sahana singh it is exactly about what it says in the title it's about the educational heritage of india especially before the british colonization period this was a surprisingly tiny book and it read more like a social studies textbook rather than a non fiction novel it was factual and dry a good try but it could have been much much more i gave this book three stars then i read eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia this is a very popular ya contemporary novel it's been a really long time since i read a ya contemporary novel and i was really surprised by how much i loved it eliza a shy reclusive teenager is actually an anonymous creator of an insanely popular web comic called monstrous sea how she deals with her anonymity her creativity and her life in general is the story it's a coming of age story and it's very difficult to make such stories appealing I must say the author is very talented and she has created a spectacular story with endearing and realistic characters. I gave this book 5 stars. I honestly couldn't find any fault with it. Then I read a bunch of romance novels. Most of them are part of a series and almost all the romance books I read this month were from Kindle Unlimited. I will give relevant links to all the books I mention in this video in the description box below. So if you would like to buy any of them do click on those links. It might earn me some commission in the process. So thank you in advance for all your support. So the first romance novel that I read was Ivan by Sophie Lark. Sophie Lark is an internet sensation right now and people can't stop praising her writing. So I just had to sample her work. Hence I started with Ivan which is the first book in her dark mafia underworld series i read this on kindle unlimited and it's really great that most of her books are available for your binge reading session this is the romance between sloan a contract killer and ivan a mafia boss 
Sloan is tasked with killing Ivan. Her failed attempt leads to her capture by Ivan, who is determined to know who hired her. This is a forced proximity romance and it was interesting and fun to read. It was also a tiny book with less than 250 pages. Now, since this is a dark romance genre, please go in knowing the trigger warnings because most of the dark romance novels comes with loads of trigger warnings. So, do uh, check that out before going into any of the dark romance novels. So Iwan is one such and I'm sure most of the other romance novels that I'm going to mention in this video are of the dark romance genre. So please know that before going into all these books. So I gave Ivan by Sophie Lark, four stars. Then I read Fold by Ashley Jade. This is book one in the Complicated Path series. I think I will have some trouble explaining the synopsis because I honestly don't remember much about the novel, though I read it just a few weeks back. This is a messy plot rather than a complicated one. Preston is a rich guy with some serious gambling and other lifestyle issues, while Kit is a lesbian struggling with cheating partners and broken hearts. Preston is attracted to Kit and somehow that's the central conflict of the book. Books such as these reinforce my belief that half of the problems that characters such as Kit and Preston have are self-inflicted ones and I honestly have no sympathy for such characters. I gave this book two stars and no, I'm not continuing with this series. Then I read an amazing series by S.T. Abbey, a series that I won't spell out because it's basically a curse word and I want to keep this channel at least PG-13 friendly. Though it has an unfortunate series name, the series per se was spectacular. I enjoyed every single book and I wanted more. Sadly, the author Christy Owens, who wrote under two other pen names, Christy Cunning and CM Owens, in addition to S.T. Abbey, passed away recently in July. I'm sure that the loss of such a talented author must be devastating to the romance world and the writing community. Now, let me lay down the premise of the series. We have a woman serial killer that set up itself as a novelty. Now, this woman serial killer falls in love with, wait for it, an FBI agent. I was hooked to this premise from the start. Because as a reader, can you imagine the possibilities, the tension? This is the peak of enemies to lovers trope. An FBI agent and a brutal serial killer are natural enemies. Romance between them must be second only to a spy and military agent, I guess. Anyway, I finished the entire series of five books within one and a half days. If there was ever a binge-worthy series, this is one. Admittedly, these were tiny books. Each book was less than 150 pages or so, but these books made me want to lock myself in a dark, cozy room and not come out till I was done with them. The first book, The Risk, I gave four stars. Second book, Sidetracked, was my favorite of all the five books. I gave Sidetracked a full five stars. If you have followed my reviews till now, you might know I rarely give a full five stars for any books. Usually, it is a high four and off stars rounded off to five, especially a dark romance book getting a five star. That's probably a first for me. I gave the third book, Scarlet Angel, three and off stars. All the Lies, the fourth book, got four stars from me. And the final book, Paint It Red, got four stars from me. Each book was action-packed, emotional and thrilling. I can't wait to read more of the author's backlist novels. Then I read a romantic comedy novel set in Regency London, Penelope by Anya Wilde. This was honestly more silly than funny, but it was a chill read. The rich Radcliffe's family take 
Penelope, a poor girl from a country under their wing to help her improve her lifestyle, standard by marrying her off to a decent chap in London. Their efforts have often comical and disastrous results owing to Penelope's naivety. Slowly but surely, she charms everybody around her despite her airheadedness, finally charming even the reticent Duke Charles. As I said, it was a silly, almost childish novel but it was fun so I don't regret reading it. I gave this book three and of stars. Then I read a few thrillers. I read the third, fourth and fifth book in the children's house series by Ursa Sigurdad Daughter, which is an excellent Icelandic thriller series that I would recommend to all mystery thriller fans. I have given a detailed non-spoilery reviews of all the books in the series in a separate blog I will link them up in the card here or I will provide the link of that video in the description box below if you are interested. I do not want to spend any more time rehashing the same opinions here in this video. The last book in the August wrap-ups list is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angelina Boulay. This is an excellent story inspired by the Canadian native tribe people who miraculously have not not only survived the intense ethnic cleansing done by the churches but also are thriving in Canada and the US. Donis is a biracial girl who loves her native culture. A murder forces her to go as an undercover investigator and it shows the rot within the communities that threatens to gobble them all up. So it is a slow paced but thrilling story filled with native cultural references, their beliefs and plot twists. I enjoyed the story immensely and I hope to see more indigenous representation in popular literature. I gave this book four and of stars and highly recommend it to be read at least once. And that's a wrap guys. Those were all the books I read in the month of August. I think it was not a shabby month of reading as I had only one two star and one three star book. Rest were all either three and off or more stars. So I'm happy with the books I read this month. Have you read any of the books I mentioned? Would you want to? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All my socials are available in the description box. So if you want to participate in the Ganesh Chaturthi reading challenge or you just want to chat with me about books, hit me up in my socials. If you like my content and would like to support me, do like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Channel. Until next time, stay safe, happy and healthy. Om Shanti.